Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. 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 You can be seated. Thank you. I'd like to open up. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Father, we thank you for our brothers and sisters that are with us here today. And Father, we thank you for those who are not here with us today, Father, that you will just bless them in a special way, that you'll allow your presence and your peace just to be there with them, that that will encourage them, Father, and just give them what they need right now at this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Woo. For about, about two or three months... I have had this, uh, this phrase in my spirit, and then we had the movie on Friday night. And the phrase was that we would go out with power. We would come forth with power. But even more than that was the word up in power. We will be raised up in power. So when I pondered that, you know, and I told Pastor Bob several months ago, I got a word, I got a word, I got a word. And at some point, you know, I thought, well, you know, in your timing, God, when it's your time, I'll be able to bring it forth. And I've just been praying about it. And then we came here Friday, had a wonderful uh, event here with the movie night. Um, We actually call it family night now because it's not just a movie. We have documentaries that we show. We have all kinds of other things that we do. We have our meal and while we were watching it, it was just so amazing to see the faith and the energy of love that these people had when they were praying for other people. And they were seeing miracles take place. And we as a body of believers have been sitting back saying, okay, Lord, where are the miracles? You know, we've been saying that for years. We see one here or one there. And we're like, well, we're going out in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're praying for people like we're supposed to. Your word said, go forth and do it. But where are these miracles? And then we have, of course, you know, we've got all the teachings out there about believing in faith and and, and all. And it's all those things are good and all those things are true where you, you have to focus on God's power flowing through you. It's not in our power. It's not how good we are. So all of that happened. And then I'm like, I'm still, you know, Pastor Bob asked me, are you ready? He asked me this last week. Well, you know me, I'm, I'm ready to go anytime he teach sure right just give me a day and I'll do it and I said of course I am absolutely and at that moment when he asked me most people would say you know Doris if you're ready to teach you got your notes down you got your scriptures out you got it all written down you're ready to go right I didn't have one word written down but I was ready I was ready and as the day went on last night I'm sorry, Friday night, saw the movie, and I'm like, I'm so stirred up because I know exactly what he wants me to bring forth, but I haven't looked at anything. I woke up Saturday morning, and the moment my eyes opened, he gave me one word, trifecta. Trifecta? What's a trifecta? I mean, don't answer what it is, but if you know what trifecta is, and it doesn't matter if you know the worldly term or the others, raise your hand if you know what that means. Now, I'm not going to call on you to tell me what it means. I'm not sure if you're talking about the worldly terms or the others, so we ain't going to go there. Trifecta. I'm like, trifecta, trifecta. We're talking about, you know, in my spirit, about the power of God manifesting on the earth and coming forth and people being healed, raised from the dead. And trifecta, what is trifecta? So I looked it up. And this is what trifecta means. It first appeared in the 1970s as a term for horse racing and betting in a horse race where they choose the first, second, and third place finishers. And if they're chosen in that exact order, guess what? Payoff is real good. Trifecta. Trifecta is also used to define a situation where three elements come together at the same time. Three elements together at the same time. Now, I don't know about you, but if I get a plate full of food, and there's mashed potatoes, and there's a steak, and some broccoli, and some broccoli, you see those three things? That's a trifecta right there now. 
Those are three things coming together real well, right? A trifecta. Let's look at, uh, we're going to go to Matthew 28. And a lot of the scriptures that I'm reading, you know, I study different versions. Some are in King James, some are Amplified, some are English Standard. It doesn't matter, I'm all over the place. But I did not write which one this was, so I'm just going to read it from my paper. This is the Great Commission as read in Matthew 28, verse 16. Let's go back to the point where Jesus sent forth his disciples. We're wondering where all the healings are, where all the miracles are. Let's go back to where Jesus sent them out, and let's see what we find. It says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed and made appointment with them. Let's go to verse 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Verse 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven has been given to me. Stop right there. All authority, all power, all rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's just letting them know, hey, I got the authority. The next word, don't turn to it yet, but the next word in the next verse says, therefore. Therefore, what's the there for, therefore? Because he's got something important to say. Anytime you see the word therefore, it's there for a reason. <laughs> therefore. Okay, let's see who I can pick on today. You guys know I just, let's see. Don't hide behind Pastor Bob. Josh, come on up here for a second. Come here, buddy. Come on up here, babe. Now, Josh has been in training to be an officer of the law for many years, right? And he has become an officer of the law. But does he wear a badge? He, he hasn't been officially given the badge, right? He's been in training, though, so he knows his stuff. He can jo do the Joe Pro jump over the tennis net hurdler stuff and all that because he's trained. But has he been given the badge of authority yet? Therefore, you can give that back to David, because that's his. Now, now when he walks into a grocery store, now when he walks into Walmart, and they see that, they know he has authority to uphold the law. Not when he was like that. They don't even know who he is. They don't even care. You know, hey, hey, what's up? But because he has the badge of authority, people know who he is. You can be an officer when you grow up. What do you want to be when you grow up? You don't know yet? Well, if you're an officer when you grow up, I want to get a picture of you with your badge. Just give it to David when you're done. Give him a hand. Badge of authority. Therefore... So here is Jesus. He's been given this authority, all authority on heaven and whoa. Why did he have to say that? Because who was given authority over the earth? Who? Satan. But all authority from heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. If the authority over heaven wasn't given to him, he couldn't lay hands on the sick and heal them because Satan would have rule. All right, let's move on to the next verse. Verse 19. Go then. Well, go then is therefore. Go then. He's, dis he's giving you that same authority in that phrase. Therefore, or go then, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, when Pastor Bob has someone up here and he's getting ready to hold him down for a little bit to make sure the old man's really dead, he says, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We have taken this scripture and we're like, yes, we're baptizing them in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Boom. And they come up and they're, you know, baptized, declaring to the world that they're saved. And there's nothing wrong with that. But guess what? If we are to accomplish what God has called us to do, we have to look a step farther. 
<laughs> you see it. I know she saw it. She preached it before I even got up here. All right. Oh. Let's go to the next one. And teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days, perpetually, uniformly, and on every occasion to the very close and cons consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. Let's look in Mark. Same thing, same great commission. I want us to look at this with fresh eyes, folks. We come in and we hear scriptures like, yeah, I know that scripture. Yeah, I know that scripture. But is it revelation? And there's so much revelation in one scripture. You can get like magnitudes of revelation over and over again every time you read it. Let's look at Mark chapter 16. And for anyone out there who's got my notes... Good luck following me on this one, because I'm already all over the place. Mark 16, we're going to start in verse 14. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven, the apostles themselves, as they reclined at the table, and reproved and reproached them for their unbelief, their lack of faith, and their hardness of heart because they had refused to believe those who had seen him and looked at him attentively after he had risen from death. Now, he's been raised from the dead. He walks up in this room, hello, while they're sitting there reclined at the table. Next verse. Verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news the gospel, to every creature of the whole human race. Next verse. He who believes, and we've gotten stuck on that. He who believes. Well, you must not believe. That's why you didn't get healed. Well, let's not do that to, folk, to people. He who believes, who adheres to and trusts in and relies on the gospel and him, who it sets forth and is baptized will be saved from the penalty of eternal death. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust in and rely on the gospel, and him who it sets forth will be condemned. Next verse. We're going to go all the way to 20. And these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. Verse 18. They will pick up serpents, and even if they drink anything deadly. Now, I don't know who got this water here today. But I know a few of you knew I was preaching today, so I can have faith and drink this. If there's anything in it that's going to kill me, guess what? I'm all right. Now, this is not a real snake. I must tell Justine that, but she's in the nursery, so it's okay. You know what this is? Copperhead. We don't play with these, children. You don't play with these if they're real, okay? If I were to pick up a deadly snake, it would not hurt me. Does that mean I go out and start playing with a bunch of copperheads? No. Really? You're right. I don't. There's a reason. There's balance in all things. Let's keep moving. They will lay hands. Hands. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they what? They will get well. Verse 19. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of God. Last verse. And they went out and preached everywhere. While the Lord kept working with them and confirming the message by the attesting signs and miracles that closely accompanied it, Amen. So be it. Go back up to verse 14. Maybe it was 15. 15, please. Openly, the good news. They preached it openly. We come in here, and I, I don't... I love preaching the word to believers because they know the scriptures and it's easy to follow along and you can understand each other all as well. Let's say 
Hmm, who can I pick on next? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Phil, you are loved and appreciated. Would you step up here, please, sir? Okay, so let's turn around. Let's look at all these wonderful people that are here today. You have 30 minutes, and then you're going to preach to them for the rest of the service. Mm. How does that make you feel? I wonder how they feel. <laughs> Wait a minute. What if that was you? What if that was you, and you had to preach, and I called you up here for that? Okay, let me ask you another question. All these people up here. These, all these people show up at your house knocking on your door, every single one of them, and they're looking for food, mm. and you have to prepare it for them. Mm. How does it make you feel? We need to go shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can sit down. Gold, yeah. Okay, corral. Here we come. How do you feel when you are put on the spot to produce something? It, it's, it's stressful. And this is why I believe God waited until yesterday morning to give me the word. Because I was trusting him. Amen. It's not us. We're not required to feed the multitudes. Hello? Hear what I'm saying? We're not required. It's God's spirit through us that ministers. It's not the vessel. It's the what's getting through the vessel and the key is how much do you know your God can you hear him when he talks because his sheep know his voice and a voice of another they will not follow so when we are put in a position we're already given the authority but when you walk in your authority and you walk because you do have a badge of authority. And the Holy Spirit says, that person right there, pray for them. You can do it, and boom, heaven meets earth right there at that moment. Now let's talk about that word God spoke to me, trifecta. Three things at the same time. I believe that for so long the body of Christ has been, let's flow in the power of the Holy Ghost. But we have forgotten the other two factors. And Rachel mentioned them this morning. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. We're going we're gonna to talk about that a little bit more in just a second. Just hold that thought. First it's natural, then it's spiritual. It's all about the flow. How is the flow coming down? Coming down from the Lord, flows through us, and reaches people, right? We're all a body of believers. We're all a part of the body. Think about your own physical body. There are many body functions. What three functions in your body, your body systems, raise your hand if you can tell me at least one that has a flow to it. There's a flow to it. Faith. Your digestive system. You eat and it flows all the way through you. Circulatory system. Your blood is constantly flowing through your body. Annie, blood flow. your blood flow. She's right on that same. Respiratory. Respiratory is a flow of air coming in, enlarging your lungs, and coming back. The system, the last system I'm thinking about, actually goes through your whole body. Your whole body. Ah, central nervous system. Your brain, your nerve endings, you touch something. There's three, those three body systems. All your other body systems are relegated to certain locations, but your entire body, and I take that back because your muscle, your muscle and an, um, skeletal system is your whole body, but there's not a flow through your whole body, if you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about flow. Let's stop right there. Three main flows. There's a trifecta going on. Three main flows. Your brain... And the nervous system is symbolic of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit flowing. The heart has to do with God. God is love. God is love. When we're ministering to people, if we are not sensing God's love for that person, if we're not sensing our love for that person, it's going to block the flow. 
it's going to block the flow. Everything in this universe that God created, and everything in that word ties in, folks. Every single thing ties in. And it is awesome to look at it unfold. Wait a minute. We have another body system. We have God the Father. We have the Holy Spirit. But there's another part that we have missed, and that is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, it always comes back to Jesus. And do you know, he is our redeemer. He is our salvation. He came to do what? Remove sin. Remove impurities. What does your digestive system do? It not only brings health, in healing to your body by bringing nutrients that it needs, but it also gets rid of everything you don't need. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This is so important. This is not far-fetched, folks. It is so important that when we are praying for people, it is not just a focus of the power of God flowing through me to reach them, but where is our heart? How pure is our heart in that moment? Are we, are we in a moment of compassion, like Jesus was reaching out with compassion for folks? What motivates us to pray for people? I want people to see this person healed while I'm praying for them because I laid hands on them. There ain't nothing going to flow through that. What about... Everybody look, we have a person here who needs prayer. No. Do you know that your faith can be to the point where you can walk by someone in the grocery store that's sitting in a wheelchair, and in your spirit you're like, Father, in Jesus' name, bring healing to that person. You can touch them, and they can receive their healing. We are getting ready to step into a move of God that I believe is going to rock our world. Are we going to be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, saying that person's of the devil? Are we going to walk around complaining about people who are out ministering? Oh, they're just trying to get attention. Or are we going to be right there with Jesus wherever he walks, we're walking. Wherever he goes, we're, we're going, we're praying, we're leading people to the Lord. It's very important to stay connected to the Lord. Now, I'm going to talk for one minute. Well, I say one minute. <laughs> um... <laughs> We're going to take a few moments to talk about how God speaks to us. So that's important. We have to hear from the Lord. How can we go out and minister to people if we're not hearing what God's plan is? Sure, we know that we're called to minister. We're called to bring healing. We're called to preach the word. But in each individual situation, does that mean that I can't do anything until I hear from God? I'm going to sit around, kids running around like crazy, not take them to school because I haven't heard from the Lord yet. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But it does mean that we're constantly in a, in a prayerful attitude, prayerful, prayerful, connected to God. When your husband or wife leaves the house and goes somewhere, do you feel disconnected from them? No, you still have that sense that they're with you. All you do is pick up the phone, they're right there. It's similar to that, but in a much stronger way. God speaks to us through his son, Jesus. Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, verse 1 and 2. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed, not 11, I'm sorry, Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2, my bad. All these ones up here, my eyes are... All right, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in different ways, God spoke of old to our forefathers in and by the prophets. Next verse. But in the last of these days, he has spoken to us in the person of a son, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, also by and through whom he created the worlds and the reaches of space and the ages of time. He made, produced, built, 
operate it and arrange them in order. Jesus, it is through Jesus, and I'm going to read this in the English Standard Version. Long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. Second John, chapter 10, verse 27. We're still talking about God speaking to us through his son. John chapter 10, verse 27. This is so important. And this is not to bring condemnation. If you're not sure how to hear from the Lord, spend time with him. Can I tell you? Spend time listening. Because not everything you hear is yourself. It's going to be from one of three places. God, or his Holy Spirit, you, or the enemy. Listen. Spend time listening. Praying is great, but listen. John 10, verse 27. The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. God can also speak to us through his word. If we're not in our word, if we're not cleaning out this flow, this tube of which God is flowing through, if this is not pure for God to flow through, that's going to block. It's going to block a manifestation of God's power. All right, if I came up here right now, and I've done this before, and I said, okay, for any of you in here who is seeking for purity in your life, stand right here in this line. Any of you who want the power of God, who want to manifest and just reach people and have healings immediately, stand right over here in this line. Guess what? Everybody wants to get over here. But guess what? It starts right here. The purity, it starts right here. That doesn't mean I'm coming up here, well, you've got sin in your life, you need to get it out or you're not going to flow in the Holy Ghost. Don't even try. Because then you'll walk around condemned the rest of your life, never touching anyone, never healing anyone. But it means when God is putting his finger on an area in your life, submit to him, yield to him, let him work on that area in your life. And all of you have been wondering what's up underneath here. Here we are. This is dilapidated because one of my children decided they needed a part of it. White, pure white. Heavenly water. Blue is heavenly. Here you have the water. We are washed by the water of the Word, the water symbolic of the Holy Spirit. As we're reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit is washing us and showing us, not just showing us areas we need to work on, but showing us how far we've come and where we are now because of Jesus and what He did for us. Now, if I'm wanting to flow this water, into this vessel and I pour it, which it's not going to flow as good as I thought it was, it's going to show up pure. It's going to show up pure through this piece of cloth as I pour it through, which obviously it's not going to pour through very well. So it's going to be pure, clean. This is not a box of cookies. Sorry, Phil. In this bucket is dirt. In this bucket are ashes, things that have been burned up in your life. My child who likes this white rag is not going to like it very much after I'm done with it. And so I have this wonderful rag with all this nastiness on it. Now what do you think is going to happen if I put this over that other cup and I start pouring it through that. Are you going to be able to see the water in this cup? It's just going to be nothing but muddy, murky nastiness, right? So having a pure flow is important. Does that mean I have to be perfect in all things? What if I sin? What if I, my mind's not doing the right thing? Take captive every thought. Make it obey the Lord. What if I'm 
I was, the Holy Spirit told me to, you know, show me, don't do this, don't do that, and I end up doing it. First John 1 John 1.9, put yourself back in line. As long as you keep your heart pure before God. David, King David himself, what in the world? That man was a man after God's own heart. And people are like, well, well I don't know about that. Killed a man, took his wife, stalking her out the window. But he changed his heart. He wanted more of God. It didn't matter. Everything else in his life was a disaster. But here he was, laid out before the Lord and could care less what anybody thought about him dancing through the streets with his underwear on. It doesn't matter what other people think. He did it as unto the Lord. He did it as unto the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean all y'all be running out here in your underwear unless you've heard from the Lord. <laughs> Please and thank you. Yeah. But God speaks th to us through his word. Hebrews 4, verse 12. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. If I have the word of God inside of me, guess what? I'm full of power. Making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to dividing the, light, the line of the breath of life, the soul, and the immortal spirit, and of joints and marrow of the deepest part of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The Word of God is so alive. It is so alive. Oh, well, I'm tired. Oh, I don't want to read my Bible. It just takes too much energy. Have you ever babysat a child who has got more energy than you ever thought was imaginable? How does it make you feel? Tired. tired. <laughs> of course you're going to feel tired taking the most incredible, powerful book in the world in your hand and reading it. But guess what it's going to do? It's going to cause you to become like a child. If you don't get on your hands and knees with that kid and play and enjoy it and take it in, take it in, take it in, you're just going to wear yourself out. Let it refresh you. Let the Word of God refresh you. You don't have to start off in something that's confusing to you that you don't understand. Pick up something simple. The Gospels, where Jesus is going around laying hands on the sick. You want to know more about demonic deliverance? Go to the book of Mark. You want to know more about the Holy Ghost? Read the book of John. You want to know more about what? Jesus and his heritage and where he came from, the line of Judah? Read the book of Matthew. You want to hear about Jesus from a doctor's perspective? Read Luke. You want to know what happened after he was raised from the dead? Read Acts. You want to hear what he started doing through people? Read all the letters in the New Testament, and you will find out what God did through his people. He has a huge thing for us to do. But do we want to do it openly? How, how afraid are we to do things openly? And what are we really afraid of anyway? Are we afraid someone's going to... You know, be like the axe murderer chasing after us because we said something wrong? Are, what, what are we so afraid of? Because heaven ain't too bad. Even if they slay me, I will still praise my God. Even if my car breaks down on the road on my way to school with my kids, which happened this week, did I get bent out of shape? No, I'm internally praying, Father, what is going to happen? Who's coming? You know, help me not to miss this moment, this divine appointment. Help me not to miss this moment. We get so caught up in our emotions. Have you guys ever seen the, the drama, the happy face and the sad face? Well, that's what it is. It's drama and woo from one side to the other. We get involved in the drama of the world. But stay focused. Stay focused on what God has done for you and what he's called you to do. And being focused on that will cause you to rely more on him. 
We're not just his little puppets. He wants to have fun with us. It is not boring praying for people. You know, going through the drive-thru the other day, I just thank God you bought those, those vitamin books. And the first lady through the drive-thru, had to get myself a sweet tea. I was like, got to have something to drink. First lady, something told me don't give it to her. I don't know. I've never had that happen before. But something told me don't give it to her. Then I gave her a different one, not that one is my point. The next one, I was supposed to give her that. And I said, hey, how you doing this morning? Have you had your vitamins today? And she's like, oh, well, no, I didn't actually. And I said, here, here's some vitamins for you. And it's those little tracks with the little vitamin pills on it, right? And she's like, oh, thank you. And I said, just read it when you get a chance. And she just, you, you would have thought I gave her a, a, a million dollars. I mean, she just absorbed that, like, just, whoa. In the split second, I could have driven through that drive through and that person could have gotten in a car accident that day. We don't know the divine appointments God has for people. I'm not preaching this to bring any condemnation on you whatsoever, but it's a learning experience. Are you going to be wrong at times? Absolutely. Raise your hand if you've missed it before. Hello. Been there, done that. However, let's move forward, go forward with God is, what God has shown us. So here we have the trifecta, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we pray for people, it's not just in the power of the Holy Spirit and opening ourselves to pray. It's in the purity. Are we ready ahead of time? Are we submitting to him ahead of time, having that pure flow? Do we have sin in our lives? We have to have the pure flow. God the Father, the love of the Father. We have to show people his love. Who, who was here Friday night? And remember that one guy who was actually doing the filming? And she is trying so hard to explain to him, you love this woman where she's at. Don't try to convert her from her religion into your religion. Just pray for her. But he was making it difficult and argue, well, they, she, you know, they this and they that. No, you just pray for them in love. It's about God's love. It's not about us pointing out what people are doing wrong. Who wants me to point out what you're doing wrong right now? Raise your hand. I didn't think so. So let's stop pointing out what other people do. Let's love people where they are. Where they are. John 16. Let's go to John. I like John. Actually, let's go to John 24. 24, 26. John chapter 24, verse 26. My eyes. Yep, we're still in Hebrews. John 24, 26. Got it, Wanye? It's not up there. There's not John. Oh, you know why? Because it's 16. It's uh, John 20. It's John 14, verse 26. I found this error earlier and forgot to change it. Everyone's looking at me like, what? There's no 24? John 14, 26. Thank you. I should have changed that earlier. Totally forgot about that. But the comforter. Counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall or will remind you of and bring into your remembrance everything I have told you. Now, if we're reading our Bibles and we're getting that word in us and it's causing us to be washed, constantly being washed. How many of you in here wait like two or three weeks before you take a shower? Oh, let's not do that. I had something to say. I am. But washed, constantly washed. We have the word in us and it's alive, right? And it's easier for the Holy Spirit to say, remember that? And it rises up in your spirit. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. And it applies to the very situation you're in. How many of you had that happen to you before? 
okay? It's important. It's important to keep the word in you. Well, I want to hear from God, and I haven't been hearing from God. I don't understand why he's not speaking to me, and he's not talking to me. Well, there might be a good reason. Get more of the word in you and spend time listening, not just praying, but listening to his voice. Listening to his voice. How many of you know, how many of you had children in here, and you're talking to them, and you're telling them, you need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that. Hello, we're going to raise it another octave? No. No, not that many times is right. We talk and we talk, but they're not hearing. And we're children unto the Lord. How many times does he tell us in patience, don't touch that. That's hot. Don't touch that. And at some point, we get burned. And then we say, what happened, God? (gasps) I don't understand. You know, we're crying our eyes out when in reality, he's been showing us the whole time. Don't touch that. Let him guide you. So many, this is so important. And Pastor Bob has mentioned this before. We get saved and we accept what he has done for us. Then he starts doing a work in us so that he can do a work through us. But a lot of times we stop right here and we're like, oh. I don't want anyone else to be in control of my life. I want to do it all by myself because I know what's right for me. And we don't let the Word of God guide us. We don't let the Holy Spirit guide us. We don't let God's Word guide us. When we are fully submissive to Him and we allow Him to guide our lives, all good things come. All good things Psalms 37. Read Psalms 37 when you get home. That's your homework. Psalms 37. All right. One or two more things, and we're going to close it down. Let's look at Mark 6, verse 34. Mark 6. And yes, it is Mark 6, 34. This is what Rachel was sharing earlier. As Jesus landed, what was he, on a plane or something? No, it's when he came out as he landed, put his feet on the ground. He saw a great crowd waiting, and he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. That word compassion, when you look at the root words, are you ready? Guess what the root word takes it back to? Probably strengthened from spleen, intestines, bowels. The same root word that's used to define compassion, that part of him, takes us back to the digestive system all over again. Okay, I'm telling you, everything ties in to the Word. Now, that totally went over some of y'all's heads, and that's okay. The ones who got it, got it. God's Word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Are you wondering where you're going and what, what is my life? What am I called to do? What is God's purpose for me? What, I don't understand. Get in his word, and he will show you. He will teach you, and the Holy Spirit will bring things back to your remembrance as well. This is a fresh new day, fresh new day, walking hand in hand with him. Now, I asked um, Frank and Linda on Friday night. You know, we were talking about the power, and, and, you know, in my spirit, I've been mulling this around for a long time. So, you know, of course, I have an electrician sitting at my desk or at my table, and I said, hey, Name one thing, the number one biggest thing that can stop the flow of electricity. And he said, an open circuit. An open circuit. If, and I won't do this, but if I took this line, David, hold this, please. Come up here and hold this. There's power. 
coming from up there, through the walls, all the way down up ceiling. I don't know which one you got that one going through. To this, through the wall. But if I cut this and separated it, it is an open circuit. It's not connected. Nothing's connected. How connected are we to God? How connected? Is he your very breath? Every part of you relies on him. Is he the one, thank you David, is he the author and the finisher of your faith, or are we just going to read that scripture and say, yeah, he is? Do you believe that he is going to strengthen your faith and cause you to grow in your faith? If there's one thing I can say through the past several years of things that have come across our path and disasters and people in hospitals and tragedies and sickness and things that we've gone through, half y'all don't even know, and that's okay. I don't get bent out of shape. I'm not going to give it the enemy place. I'm not going to get angry because something happened to me. What is the moment... This is a trifecta moment. It's a trifecta. Every time something happens now when it's like, ah, just think, trifecta. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All three elements are here. All right, God, what's going to happen? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? And guess what? Just like in that horse race, whenever all three line up and you're like, ah, I want all this money, you're going to feel the same way. Because when you focus in on what's happening in that moment, what God's moment is, you become a part of God's heart and his plan, and it's exciting. There's nothing boring about Christianity. There is nothing bo- Who said Christianity was boring? Nobody in here? Nobody in here? Okay, I just, I'm just asking because it is so not boring. Far from boring. <sighs> Never boring. Our relationship to the Holy Spirit, our relationship to God, our relationship to Jesus is very important. And he speaks to us through all three. All three. How many of you in here have ever heard the audible voice of God? Or it was so strong you knew? There's several of you. How many of you want to hear that again? Only a couple people. (laughs) It's pretty, it's pretty powerful, pretty powerful. Be encouraged because the Christian, the world of Christians today, everyone's looking for the miracles, looking for the signs. And can I tell you, the enemy's going to make sure they see it. But if we're not connected to God, if we're not a connected and knowing him as our Father, our Savior, we may miss what he's doing and get more focused on the Antichrist and what he's doing. So, let's everyone stand to your feet. All right. And I know it's a couple minutes after uh, one, but we're going to go ahead and end this way. I would like for everyone to just right now, do you love the person next to you? Is there any ought or any, any anger or anything between you and the person next to you? Do you feel any anxiety, any issues with the person next to you? Totally forgiven. Everything's good. Okay, then we got the first part of the trifecta done. Let's pray for the second part. Lord, if there's anything in me that is hindering your flow, I confess it as sin, and I ask you to forgive me. I forgive everyone. Everyone that's ever hurt me, everyone that's disappointed me, everyone who hasn't done what I thought they should do, I let him go. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. We just did number two. You ready for number three? Lord, I receive your power. There's some of y'all are feeling it. Let him refresh you. Let him fill you up. He's here. I feel it. His power 
is distributed to you, overwhelmingly distributed to you for a reason, not just for you to take it to other people, but for you. Enjoy your Father. Enjoy your Father. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's go to somebody right now. You've never done this before. And lay hands on them and pray for them. Okay? All, everybody over there now. Go to somebody. Not your daddy, not your mama, somebody that you don't even know. Go right now. Lay hand, pray for them. Begin to pray. Everybody over here do the same thing. Over here. Grab somebody. Yeah, don't look. Yeah. Go ahead. Pray for them. That's right. Put your hand. And if you need to come up here for prayer, come up. Or we'll pray for you. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. I just can't seem to find a reason